Hi everyone. Welcome back to the session Land with Fun Pharmacology Concepts. This is the part 3 of the video series. Please don't forget to click the like button and post your comments in the comment box. So let us start. First one, find the drug name with following clues. These are the blocks in which we have to fill the drug name and the given clues are the first one, it ends with suffix mycin. Second clue, it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis. Third clue, it contains large lactone ring. So what is the name of the drug? According to these clues, you can think about the right answer. You can have five seconds time. Otherwise, you can pause this video and think about the right answer. So now let us go with the solution for this puzzle. The first clue is that it ends with the suffix mycin. So we can simply fill the suffix as mycin. Then we can think about what is the name of this drug. In order to identify the drug, we have to list out the various types of drugs which are ending with the suffix mycin. In our pharmacology, we can see so many types of drugs, particularly antibacterials end with suffix mycin. If we list out one drug from each category, we can have four types of drugs. The first one is vancomycin and related drugs. Second one, streptomycin. Third one, erythromycin. Fourth one, mitomycin. All these drugs are having the same suffix mycin. In order to find the right answer, we have to go for the next clue. So let us see the next clue. It inhibits the bacterial protein synthesis. So among these drugs, which drug inhibits the protein synthesis? Let us discuss about these drugs initially. The first one is a vancomycin. Vancomycin is one of the drug which can inhibit the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. This drug inhibits the release of building block, thereby it can inhibit the growing chain of peptidoglycan. Now within the bacteria, cell wall is going to be synthesized by two types of units, NSTL, glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid. n acetyl muramic acid is having the five amino acids. Among these, the last two amino acids are made up of D-alanine. Among this dipeptide, one of the amino acids is going to be removed, which initiates the incorporation of this chain into the growing chain of peptidoglycan layer. This brings the cross-linking between the layers, resulting in the synthesis of rigid cell wall within the bacteria. Now this step is going to be blocked by vancomycin. Vancomycin can bind to this D-alanine dipeptide such that the terminal amino acid cannot be removed and this chain cannot be incorporated with the growing chain so that cell wall synthesis is going to be inhibited. If we see the second drug streptomycin, streptomycin inhibits protein synthesis within the bacteria. On the bacterial ribosome, Streptomycin can bind to the 30S subunit. Once it is going to bound to the 30S subunit, it can impair the recognition of codon and anticodon. Normally, tRNA can bring an amino acid which binds to the A site of 50S subunit. But streptomycin blocks this recognition, so it can inhibit the codon anticodon pairing. This results in inhibition of protein synthesis within the bacteria. Third one is erythromycin. Erythromycin again inhibits the protein synthesis within the bacteria, but it acts by different mechanism. This drug can bind to the 50S subunit where it can inhibit the transfer of peptide chain from one side to the other side. So erythromycin inhibits translocation within the bacteria. Fourth one is the mitomycin. Mitomycin is an anti-cancer agent. This drug can produce cross-linking within the DNA. So one of the target of this drug is the DNA where mitomycin acts as alkylating acid. It can bind to the nucleophilic sites on the DNA, where it can produce a cross-linking between the strands of DNA. This results in the decreased DNA replication, thereby it inhibits cell proliferation. That's why mitomycin acts as anti-cancer agent. Now if we come back to the puzzle, the second clue, it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis. Among the drugs we have already listed out, the first one is vancomycin, streptomycin, erythromycin, and mitomycin. Among these, vancomycin inhibits cell wall synthesis within the bacteria, streptomycin inhibits protein synthesis, erythromycin again inhibits protein synthesis, 
but mitomycin is an anti-cancer agent which produces alkylation of the DNA. So according to the second clue, vancomycin and mitomycin are not the right answers because they are not affecting the protein synthesis within the bacteria. Now in order to find the right answer, let us go for the third clue. Now the third clue is that it contains large lactone ring. Now among the two drug categories, which is having the large lactone ring? Streptomycin belongs to the aminoglycosides. It is having the glycoside ring with amine portion, so it is not the right answer. But erythromycin is a macrolide, which is having a large lactone ring, so erythromycin is the right answer. So here the drug name is erythromycin. Now if we summarize, vancomycin is one of the glycopeptide, which is having the suffix mycin, but it inhibits cell wall synthesis. And the related drug is the daptomycin, which is called lipopeptide, which again inhibits cell wall synthesis. Similarly, another drug is the streptomycin. Streptomycin belongs to the category of aminoglycosides. Within this category, so many drugs are having the suffix mycin. For instance, kenamycin, neomycin, tobramycin, all these are having the suffix mycin, which clearly indicates they are aminoglycosides. But within this category, a similar suffix is also available with a little difference. For instance, nitylmycin and gentamycin are having suffix MICIN. But all these drugs are classified as aminoglycosides. Still, we have another drug, amicacin, with a different suffix, which is again aminoglycoside. So, whenever we can find the suffix mycin, they are mainly belongs to the aminoglycosides. Third one is erythromycin. These are the macrolide antibiotics, which are having the large lactone ring. And this category includes other drugs like clarithromycin and azithromycin. Here you can clearly observe that the suffix of these drugs is not the mycin, instead it is thromycin. So whenever we observe the suffix thromycin, they indicate macrolide antibiotics. Similarly, when we observe the suffix mycin, they are mainly aminoglycoside antibiotics, except vancomycin and daptomycin, which are the antibacterials inhibiting cell wall synthesis. And another exception is the mitomycin, which is an anti-cancer agent. So all these drugs are having the similar suffix mycin, but macrolides can be differentiated by their suffix thromycin. Next one, identify the drug suffix. Here this drug is having the suffix TAN. And the clues are, they affect blood pressure, they control headache, they act as agonists. So with these clues, we have to identify the proper drug suffix. You can think about this question by pausing this video. Now we will go with the solution for this puzzle. First of all, let us list out the drug suffixes which are ending with the term TAN. If we carefully observe, sartan are one group of drugs which are used as antihypertensives. Similarly, tripton are another group of drugs which are used to treat the migraine. Now both of these category of drugs are having the similar suffix TAN. So what is the right answer for this question? In order to see that, we have to go for the first clue, they affect the blood pressure. So among these two categories, which affect the blood pressure? If we see the sartans, they are angiotensin receptor blockers, commonly known as ARBs. These drugs end with the suffix sartan. We have the drugs like losartan, olmisartan, telmisartan, valsartan, irbisartan, candisartan. All these are commonly known as sartans, they are ARBs. Similarly, drugs ending with tripton, they are anti-migraine agents. So drugs like sumatripton, rizatripton, jolmitripton, elitripton, frovatripton, and naratripton. All these are anti-migraine agents which are commonly known as tripton drugs. Now, among these two category of drugs, which can affect the blood pressure? So sartans are going to reduce the angiotensin 2 action by blocking the angiotensin 2 receptor type 1. By blocking this receptor, they can inhibit the vasoconstriction, thereby they can reduce the blood pressure. That's why sartans are used as antihypertensive agents. But among these, few of the drugs like losartan can also be used in the treatment of migraine, since these drugs can also reduce the headache. On the other hand, tripton drugs mainly produce cranial vasoconstriction which reduce the headache, that's why they are indicated for acute treatment of migraine.
But along with cranial vasoconstriction, these ducts can also produce coronary vasoconstriction as well as peripheral arterial vasoconstriction. Since they produce the vasoconstriction, they increase the blood pressure. That's why tripton drug should not be given in those patients with severe arterial hypertension. Now if we see both of these categories of drugs, sartons and triptons can affect the blood pressure. Sartons are going to reduce the blood pressure and triptons can increase the blood pressure. So if we go to the first clue, both of these drugs can affect the blood pressure. Then let us see the second clue, they control headache. Again we have seen that triptons are mainly indicated to control migraine headache, whereas sartons can also reduce the headache and they can be used even in the migraine. So both of these category of drugs can control the headache. Then third one, they act as agonies. So among these two categories, which act as agonies? Sartans are one category of drugs which are acting like AT1 antagonies. They are the antagonies for angiotensin 2 receptor subtype 1. Here you should not be confused that they are the antagonists on angiotensin 1 receptors. Actually, they are not acting on angiotensin 1 receptor. Instead, they are acting on angiotensin 2 receptor subtype 1. This subtype is indicated with subscript 1. So, AT1 are the receptors for angiotensin 2, which is blocked by sartans. On the other hand, triptans act as agonists, particularly at 5ST1D receptors as well as 5ST1B receptors. Thereby, they can produce cranial vasoconstriction and they can reduce the migranial headache. So here sartan is not the right answer as it acts as antagonist. So tripton is the right answer for this question. In this way, from this puzzle we can learn two things. Two category of drugs, sartans and triptons, they can affect the blood pressure, but sartans reduce the blood pressure, whereas triptons can increase the blood pressure. Since they increase the blood pressure and they can produce coronary vasoconstriction, tripton should be carefully used in the patients with any severe arterial hypertension. And both of these drugs can control the headache. And particularly, triptons are used in the acute treatment of migraine. But sartans act as antagonists on angiotensin 2 receptor, whereas triptans act as agonists on 5ST1D or 1B receptors. In this way, by analyzing the concepts and interlinking the concepts, we can learn the pharmacology in very easy way. I think this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and hit the like button to support our work. If you have any doubts or ideas, please post in the comment section. So that's for today. Thank you for watching this video.